What's up guys? Welcome to the channel. This is Sonora Design and guess what? Today is going to be the best day ever because we're finishing the CHR Towers. Alright guys, so I'm here on video number two. I don't know if you guys watched video number one, but on video number two, we are gonna finish those amazing towers. I posted already on video number one, the goals for our project, the driver selection, FRD and ZMA files, crossovers, material selection and a bunch of other things okay so you guys go check it out if you haven't already link is gonna be in the description down below but this is video number two and on video number two we're gonna do some more woodworking we're gonna make decisions we're gonna change a few things on the design and at the end we're gonna get a great result so i'm gonna report now how did we get there? Cause it's a long way to the top. Let's cut some wood and let's get this thing ready. Cause it's a lot to report. I hope you guys have fun uh, and enjoy the process as always. because I want the grain to follow up and match. That's why we did a 45 degree cut here. And then we're gonna round the edges on a router. You guys saw it, we got like the whole slab. We chop it like bottom, front, top, back. Okay, so the whole perimeter. You know that this is the front, that's the top. After the top comes the back. And guess what? It matches. And after the back, it goes around and we have the bottom. And guess what? The bottom doesn't match. Why? Because the bottom matches the front. At some point, they're not gonna match, right? I wanna tell you guys another thing. It's very tricky to cut 45 degree and have it perfect because uh, first, this cut gotta be 90 degree perfect, all squared. So your tools gotta be adjusted. Please adjust your tools. If it's a little off, your box is gonna be all crooked and the whole thing is not gonna close perfectly. It's not gonna glue. It's gonna be a little open, a little twisted. Then 45, I don't know if you guys noticed, but this is not 45, it's 45.4. We cut it a, a little extra, okay? So the outer side matches perfectly. At the end, we get our right to end. We got it right. We always cut a little over. So the tip of it matches perfectly here on the top. Cause if your angle is not 45.4 or 45.5, it might be a little open on the top here. No, you gotta be closed on the top. It might open a little bit on the bottom, but not on the top. That's the trick guys. So remember to adjust your tools, okay? Even though it might not work at the end. <laughs> so we try to do the best for it to work. If it doesn't, we'll figure it out later. But for now, let's keep working on our hardwood perimeter box. Another thing, I didn't plane this wood. So this is not a three quarter wood. Why? Because it's thick enough. I wanted it to be thick enough. The box ended up being a little bigger 
than my drawings. The way to reduce the volume inside is like use thicker wood so it grows to the inside so it gets more volume so you have less volume inside. So I didn't care much about planing the wood okay I just left it to 2.1 centimeters it's close to 7 eighths which is good. Uh, another thing I cut it a little wider. Why is that? Because you always chip the sides or it fall down on the floor. So once we attach the sides, we just put them a little recessed on the inside and route the corners. Because if you try to adjust the side to get it like perfect and flush, mm, it might not work. So it's better to have it overlapping and route the excess. We're gonna keep moving on guys, cause this is just the beginning. And guess what? It's looking good. Alright guys, so guess what? I think we have something. We have wood. Plywood and hardwood. Let's put it together kind of to see what happens. But first, I'm gonna tell you something. Here, I cut a groove here. It's recessed. And remember what I said before? Our plywood's gonna fit here. And there is a lip here that we're gonna remove with the router. Okay, let's put it together and see what happens. So, let's start with the top. Top, bottom, side wall. Remember, we have to match the wood. Front, and, ah, we have the bottom. And then, we put the top here. Fall. Okay guys, I just gotta figure out like how am I gonna glue that, okay? And keep it all straight. Hmm. Hmm. Let me think about it a little bit, okay? I'll be back. Alright guys, I think I have the solution. Okay, I'm gonna show you. It's so simple. I'm gonna use duct tape. And it's gonna work, hopefully. And guess what? I cut a bunch of shims. And we are gonna adjust our front baffle with the shims. So we're gonna shim it, uh, make the, the frame all straight. It is gonna work because it always works at the end. If it's not working, it's cause it's not the end yet. But we're getting there because there's a lot to do. So let's move on. Oh.
guys. So we have the boxes and they are glued and they are straight. They are like 90 degrees. It's pretty good. I gotta tell you something guys. This is gonna be heavy. We don't care because it's gonna be sturdy. It's gonna be firm. It's gonna be contained and uh, it's gonna be extravagante. So for now we have the box and we gotta measure it. The box is gonna be like 36 5 eighths. We have 90 inside. 31, 13. Pretty simple. We have 36 liters. It's a monster box. We need like six or seven liters for our top speaker. If we have like 36, we take six, we're gonna have around 29 and a half because we have 36.2, let's say 36. So the top would be seven liters. Okay, so we do the wall here at 18. Guess what? 18 plus two, 20. So we take 20 out of 90 and we have 70. So we have the remaining balance is 70 times 31 times 13. We have 28 liters left. That's all we have for today. Uh, and we're gonna keep working. Now we're gonna cut the internals. Let's listen to some music and move on. Adios amigos. Suerte. <music> Guys, guess what? The drivers had arrived. SB Acoustics model SB 13 PFC R25 8. Is that good enough? All right, guys, that's the SB Acoustics. Plastic frame, paper cone. It looks pretty, but I really don't like the frame. This slanted plastic frame, and it's a little glossy. I don't know. Our front baffle has to be flush and flat. Maybe we want to switch the drivers just because they don't look like they're going to fit perfectly and amazingly and beautifully in our box. So, I'm gonna run some uh, comparisons with other options and then we can decide. But for now, our boxes are looking good. Everything works perfectly. Even if we make the holes, we can always switch the drivers, okay? Let's move on, guys. There's a lot to do. <laughs>
Can you see it? All right, those are our boxes. Okay guys, so we got the hose with the magic router. So now we are going to separate our box, okay? Put the internals and glue it. We need our bottom part, port part, bracket, and our closed box. It's a long day, guys. Let's keep going because, you know, we can't stop. Life is so beautiful. It's not easy, but it's beautiful. And it's even more beautiful with good speakers. Let's go, let's glue it. Move on, guys. Good luck. guys I guess I'm here again in the same outfit to say the same things over and over again let's finish that <laughs> we got our box and we're gonna remove the clamps now we have to add the ports cut the opening on the back so we can access the crossovers we can access the inside of the box like the other one we made okay we might make like a aluminum plate and put the binding posts. Bottom part, front. I'm gonna send it down. I'm not sure if I'm gonna round the bottom. The top is already rounded. And on the back, we're gonna cut the, the aluminum plate and then we're gonna have the port on the bottom. I'm spray painting the parts. I cut it already. They have 25 centimeters in length by 13 centimeters wide and the pieces are drying because I painted, I spray painted black so we don't want to see the wood. And then we're ready to close it, okay? We add the padding and we're ready, guys. Because it's looking good. Actually, it's looking pretty good. I love it. Let's keep moving on. inside now we have uh, some damping material this is the sonic barriers not a sound barrier I'm gonna post all the information you need on the link down below so don't worry for now the thing it's a sticker but anyways the thing is we have those layers here and this is kind of a foam layer we have like a rubbery layer here it's like hard to uh, lower the energy can you believe that? I forgot to turn off the compressor. That's unacceptable.
much added the sonic barrier. Okay, that's the port. We're gonna route it when we have the side attached. I still gotta finish the closed box. And I did some changes on a closed box here. As you guys can see, all those clamps. What happened is that at the end we have 7.2 liters and I wanna go like lower. According to our frequency response graph, we have the full range is playing uh, until 100 hertz and it's and then it cuts on that box yeah that box it's around six liters we had 7.2 here okay so i have a smaller box we're gonna have like a higher uh f3 if needed we can always add material make the box smaller or we can make a second order crossover and have like a steeper slope so that's the plan all the information is gonna be on the link down below yeah I know I need a haircut, guys, but who cares? What matters is that we got mail. Guess what? I had to interrupt our box because I ran out of Sonic Barrier. We got the drivers too, so let's open it up and see what happens here. Wow, guess what? Finally, we got our Sonic Barrier. Next box. That's from Maddie Sound. We're adding 250 bucks to our project. Okay, it's getting expensive, I know. But guess what? It's gonna sound incredible. Ta -da -da. Okay. Okay, guys, let's open one. That's the SB15 MFC38. Lucas, the the edge here. That's something I was complaining about the other driver because it was like slanted. Like, guess what? This is metal. I'm excited right now. Let's finish our box. Let me readjust the camera. Let's do it. the speakers clamped and glued finally okay clamps off ah, okay all right guys we are gonna route the corners the hardwood is a little wider we're gonna route the corners and get it straight because it gotta be all flush and perfect for the veneer and this little opening this little gap it's gonna be filled with bondo this is gonna fill the gap because in case we have a little leak we have the bondo on the top and it's gonna make it all flush and smooth and then we can add our veneer sheet i remember back in the day <laughs> I used to make subwoofer boxes like for car stereos for my friends, you know, that, that's how I started. I didn't have a table saw or a circular saw, so I'd cut all the pieces of wood with jigsaw. And guess what? It was all like <laughs> curvy and not straight. I mean, I was pretty good on the jigsaw, you know, but it didn't get like that straight. So what did I do? I added bono on the corners. Guess what? It worked. I don't know if you guys remember that. We had a software called Term Pro, which give us the, the specs for the, the boxes. But that was back in the day. Today is much easier. We have internet, we have Google, we have all kinds of calculators and makes our life so much easier, guys. 
you guys are privileged. I guess I am too, because I'm still alive and making boxes. <laughs> I didn't go to hell yet, but I'm getting ready. <laughs> oh, shit. All right, guys, let's keep moving on, okay? Let's route the corners, bundle the box, and get ready for the veneer. That's what we have for today, guys. Enjoy the process, because it's looking good. Bye. <laughs> Guys, so guess what? The battery died, so I finished it. Well, now get a wait, guys. I hope it works, okay? All right, I'm done. Formula One today. Just gonna watch. See you guys soon. Bye. speakers are ready I'm gonna talk a little bit about it I gotta show you guys the crossovers and a couple of curves so you guys know how does it perform kind of but the thing is it sounds amazing so I think most of our goals were achieved it's a small footprint it looks great it sounds big 
we get to around 35 hertz. Crossover components, first order crossovers, okay? Those are the considerations. I know it got more expensive. At the end of the day, we're spending like five, 84, uh, five, we got to like 600 with materials, which is an expensive speaker, I guess. But don't worry guys, cause next project's gonna be a very affordable speaker. I'm gonna show you guys some curves that we got. First, I'm gonna plot on the screen the crossovers, okay? So you can make your own crossovers. I'm gonna post it right now, okay? That's the filter, the crossover, I mean. Okay, guys, so for now, let me show you what I have on the computer. Uh, I'm gonna start with the first curve, which is the speaker inside my living room. Bass got a little out of control inside my living room. So I have a bump here on 100 hertz, okay? So it's punchy. And then we have like a little, a mid curve here, it's pretty flat. So that's our first curve. Okay, so now listening position, guys. That's when I sit far away from the speakers and I adjust the angle. So this is the listening position where the speaker's perpendicular to the wall, which I really like the sound stage this way. And guess what? The highest drum a little bit you see the highs dropped significantly but it's got a little bit more controlled here so we have like if we got an average here yeah we have 35 Hertz and a bump on a hundred but I have another curve here and the speakers are like towed in so I have the number 15 so though we have set those two curves okay which the, the red one is a pretty good curve it has like the meads are more like I guess balanced less like intense you have the highs still, you know? So, I mean, the sound stage is still pretty good. I think like if you open it a little bit more, it makes the sound stage like wider, like more focused in center. So those are the curves, guys. I have like, um, the thing is I brought the speakers outside, okay? Cause it was raining like crazy in LA. And I set up my, my little measuring paraphernalia here and I got to the 16 curve. I'm gonna delete the averages on the inside. And we have like uh, another curve, okay? That's a meter away. Guess what? I put the microphone off axis and then I got to curve number 17. So curves 17 is the off axis curve. And I gotta tell you something, those speakers sound amazing. They sound big for like five inch drivers. It's powerful. They can handle a lot of power. I'm using like my Peach 3 amplifier, the Nova 300. I go really high on it. Low bass. Those are five inch drivers. I told you guys in the beginning, it's challenging to get that much of low bass. So those speakers are more like into the punchy uh, bass. Okay, we get to 35 inside of our, inside of the living room from 100 to 100 Hertz to 35 Hertz. There's a drop of like around five to six dB, which is normal. The thing is guys, remember it has to sound good. Okay. So those are curves. I mean, it tells you a lot, but I mean, does it sound really good? It might look good in the graph, but I mean, you gotta feel it. If you guys want it, just come over and listen to it. If you don't want to make your own, come listen to mine. Just post on the chat down below. I want to go and check your speakers, the CA, jar towers right now so those are the results i think we achieved like very good results it's a peculiar box i know it's like a full range with two woofers those are the, my favorite speakers of the year you know since we started this channel this year that's our chr tower speaker i hope you guys like the video i hope you guys enjoy this year of videos from sonora design i guess that's it that was a great year all the information is going to be on the link down below. The good thing about this year, I didn't kill all the plants. They survived for a whole year. <laughs> I hope you guys had fun. Thanks for watching and hope to see you guys soon.